The third current uh, petition is PE 1512 by Bill Chisholm on amendments to the Freedom of Information Scotland Act 2002. Members of a note by the, the clerk, the spice briefing and the petition and submission from the Scottish Information Commissioner. Could I welcome the petitioner, uh, Bill Chisholm, uh, and Lisa Brown to the meeting and invite Mr Chisholm to make a short presentation of around five minutes to set the context for the petition, after which I move to questions. Mr Chisholm. Thank you, Thank you Mr Convener. Um, as a council taxpayer who contributes about £250 a month to my local authority, <coughs> I've always taken a keen interest in decisions made by my local government officials and elected councillors, decisions which enable them to spend other people's money. But before the <coughs> Freedom of Information Scotland Act 2002 came into force, it proved to be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to ask councils and other public bodies for even basic information. And although I welcomed the Freedom of Information Scotland Act 2002, which meant authorities had to divulge information many of them would have preferred to keep secret, I believe the FOI system has suffered from get-out clauses, which allows far too much information to be classified as exempt. I'm sure that many requesters give up at the first hurdle when their council, health board or government department refuse to provide a meaningful answer. I also believe that all FOI compliant bodies should have to publish their responses to requests on their respective websites. I understand publication is not compulsory at present, which enables some authorities to avoid scrutiny. However, until my recent experience with a freedom of information request to my local authority, I was unaware that those organisations covered by the Act are not duty-bound to give accurate and honest answers or to supply up-to-date information. Surely, without such a built-in caveat, the FOI system's credibility is diminished. On the other hand, if accuracy and honesty were to be guaranteed, then FOI would become an even more powerful weapon in the quest for knowledge. In my own case, I asked a straightforward question, seeking details of the legal fees incurred by my council during a data protection appeal tribunal. They claimed to have spent only £13,000 on the entire legal process, despite having told a different requester six months earlier and before proceedings were completed that the bill had reached almost £20,000. Because I realised their response to me had been false, I immediately challenged their answer and was then told the actual expenditure totaled over £47,000. A senior finance official claimed the £13,000 figure quoted originally had been supplied, quotes, in good faith, end quote. I was left with the impression that the numbers had been plucked out of thin air. Had I not taken issue with the response, then my council would have been able to convince the public their appeal had only cost £13,000 of public money rather than the actual total of £47,000. The experience left me with the feeling that the FOI system could be undermined if public authorities failed to supply truthful responses to requesters. So I decided to pursue the issue with the Scottish Information Commissioner and beyond. But as you will see from the background accompanying the petition, both the Scottish Information Commissioner's Office and Nicola Sturgeon, in her capacity as Cabinet Secretary for Infrastructure, Investment and Cities, confirmed in correspondence with me and my constituency MSP that information supplied in FOI requests is not necessarily accurate or up-to-date. And if a requester is dissatisfied because he or she believes that the information is misleading, inaccurate, contains errors or is otherwise deficient, this is not something that the Commissioner can address in terms of FOISA. No one can estimate or even hazard a guess as to how many inaccurate or misleading responses have been issued since the Act became effective in 2005. However, one study suggests up to one in four FOI responses could be inaccurate, so surely action is needed to discourage further examples of freedom of disinformation. I am led to believe that a fair number of MSPs use freedom of information requests to uncover information deemed to be in the public interest. So an additional clause or two in the 2002 Act demanding accurate responses to requests would benefit politicians as well as the man and woman in the street. I would respectfully suggest such an amendment might also reduce the number of requests for review and could even discourage the practice of issuing incomplete responses or complicated answers designed to cover up or confuse. I believe the Information Commissioner should have the power to investigate, but only if a requester provides evidence of an obviously misleading or inaccurate response 
as was in my case. There seems to be some confusion on the Commissioner's part about what the petition is trying to achieve. No one could expect the SIC to ensure that every response to a FIO, FOI request was accurate in every detail. But if an authority deliberately sets out to deceive and a requester can back allegations of deception with hard facts, then the matter is surely worthy of investigation. When wrongdoing is uncovered, then there should be sanctions available to impose by the Commissioner. I had suggested monetary penalties, but perhaps the politicians might think a system of fines would not be appropriate, as it would inevitably penalise the taxpayers who fund public authorities. Maybe a slap on the wrist in the form of a reprimand, combined with the accompanying negative publicity, would be sufficient to bring culprits to book and act as a warning to others. I hope the committee sees some merit in my petition and is prepared to give it further consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution. And I can also say to Vice Brown, do catch my eye if you wish to come in at any stage during our, our questioning. Um, my first uh, couple of questions, and I'll bring in my colleagues, uh, you'll know that the Scottish Information Commissioner has said that the changes, and I quote, are not needed, would not be workable in practice, and may have come about as a result of misunderstandings of current provisions of the Act. What's your view on that, Mr Chisholm? Well, uh, she, the Commissioner, I had correspondence with her before I put in my petition, and um, the, the point she made to me was that she could, not, uh, she could not investigate allegations of inaccuracy. Um, she says the thing is unworkable. I, I, I don't see that that is the case, uh, because a simple change in the law would facilitate that, and there would be re relatively few cases, in my view. There wouldn't be a whole, pleth a whole host of new applications. Um, in my particular case, I couldn't go through the process because before I could apply for a review, my counsel actually gave me the correct information. But it was only because I knew the application, the answer was false in the first place. Thank you for that. My next question is, you'll know that Section 65 of the Act makes it a criminal offence to alter, block, um, or in some ways change uh, information, and the Commissioner has the power to refer to the Court of Session. Is, is there not sufficient powers within the legislation to stop? I would like to know how many cases have been referred to the Court of Session. Um, and the, the survey that was done uh, shows that um, perhaps one in four answers are inaccurate. So why have none of those been either referred to the Court of Session or gone to some other? Or, mm. I think in some cases they can go to the police, can't they? Right. How, do you have the information how many cases were referred to the court of session? Sorry, no, I don't. I, right. I, I, I just wondered how many had been. Yeah, all right. Well, that's, I'm sure that's something the committee would uh, bear in mind in terms of ne next steps. Yep. And the uh, other question I just want to clarify is what action would you like this committee to do in terms of uh, bringing forward your petition or the recommendations in your petition? Well, as I said in my presentation, uh, I think um, a, f a simple few words in, included in the Act or an amendment to the Act, uh, just simply saying that public bodies in re re responding to requesters are duty-bound to provide accurate and up-to-date answers. That's basically it. Thank you for that. And I bring in my colleagues. Uh, Chuck Brody. Yes. Um, good morning. 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 Um, just following on from one of the questions that the convener made in terms of uh, Section 20 of the uh, Act. <clears throat> Can you just help me? When, when you found this information was incorrect, did you follow that, the process which goes back and asked, you went back to presumably Borders Council and asked them to review the information they provided to you? Well, I keep a close eye on the Council's FOI website and in April 2013, they had told a, um, a requester they had spent £20,000 on this legal process. And I waited until the whole process was over, then put my question in, and the answer came back 13000 so I knew it to be false. Well, well, once, sorry to, to interrupt, Mr. So, Chisholm, on, sorry, on, on the same day oh. that I received the answer, I sent an email to the FOI person at the council and immediately got a revised set of statistics without even going to review. But doesn't that process that you followed uh, confirm that the process in the Act, in particular that section, is robust because you followed it as you would if you thought the information was incorrect? 
then you had the right to go back to the authority to review their answer, which you did, and in which they revised. So I'm not sure what we're trying to achieve if, in your particular case, as I understand it, that you actually followed the process in what is generally a, a fairly robust act. Well, I didn't follow the process because I, before I could go to the Commissioner, I would have had to put in a review, and I didn't get a chance to put in a review because, as I say, it was only because I knew that the Council's answer was false uh, that I was given the correct figures. If I hadn't known that, then they would have, um, in the words, got away with it. No, but my point being that you didn't get the correct information under an FOI, then you went back and asked them, and they gave you the correct information, which is what the Act provides for before you go to the, the Commissioner. So, in fact, your particular case actually, uh, and well done, by the way, uh, confirmed that that's the way the Act should operate. Yes, but does it not also mean that if I hadn't known that the answer was false, then the Council could have given out a false figure and, and got away with it? Well, I, I, th I think it's not a question of... Certainly, again, because of your attention to the detail, uh, confirmed that the information was wrong. Um, but even if you suspected it was wrong and you didn't have anything to base that on, you did. You still had the right to go back to the authorities and say, I don't believe your number, please go and check it. Yes, yes, I did that. Okay. Right. I yep. think that's the point. Thank you. Can I ask other members who wish to make any comments on this? Uh, John Wilson. Good morning, Mr. I, I thank you for your response to uh, the Scottish Information Commissioner's the, the suggestion that we close this petition down on its, the first hearing today. Uh, and I'm intrigued by the figures, and I, I know the figures are from the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, uh, who you have quoted in your submission, uh, saying that almost one in four of all FOI request responses contained inaccurate information. The following on from Mr. Brodie's point, how do we ensure, if we don't get a change in the legislation as the, the information commissioner suggested, how do we ensure local authorities provide accurate information to those who make an FOI request to them? Well, at present, there is no mention of accuracy in the Act, and I think the, your own spice briefing does confirm that. Yep. Um, so would it not uh, be advantageous to have um, a, a guarantee or a, a written guarantee of accuracy um, included in the FOISA Act? I, I would agree with you in terms of the accuracy. And one of the, the major issues that I've identified in the past is the, the way that some local authorities record the decision-making process. Uh, we, we, if you were sitting in, in the earlier discussion in the previous petitions regarding uh, decisions being made at board meetings of po both the police and the uh, fire and rescue services, where unless there are accurate minutes taken or detailed minutes taken, of decisions and who participated in these decisions, then does it not become impossible for some individuals making an FOI request to actually be provided with the information required, accurate information required, because local authorities do not record the decision-making process in an accurate manner? I have examples in my own council's case where no records at all have been taken before decisions have been made. Um, so that makes it even more impossible, but I would agree with you on that, yes. The convener, I think the, the case here, and I think the issues have been raised, and I should put on record that I welcome the initiative by the, the Scottish Information Commissioner to actually <coughs> respond to the petition prior to us actually hearing it as a committee, uh, but I don't think that stops this committee from further investigating this and possibly at some later date asking the Information Commissioner to come along uh, and give evidence to this committee as to how they can interpret the current legislation delivers what the people of Scotland expect FOI legislation to deliver. Because if one in four of the responses in FOI requests can, could be seen as being inaccurate, 
then that means 25% of the population making FOI requests may be getting answers that are not accurate and may be misleading. And unless, in your case, Mr Chisholm, where you knew the information to be inaccurate, you were able to then <coughs> challenge and get the accurate information from that local authority. That is the only piece of research I have seen done uh, about uh, the level of inaccuracy. Um, there may be others, but I haven't been able to find them. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I think that's a, a useful point as far as inviting the Information Commissioner to a future meeting of the committee. Can I ask other members who wish to come in? Um, our me uh, Chip Road, I think you wanted to come in. Well, just yeah. one last point, because currently I'm in a situation not with a local council, but with the Westminster Government. Uh, and it was instructive to me, and I thank you very much for bringing this forward, because it highlights two things, in my opinion. Uh, uh, the, the Section 65 which says it's a criminal offence to alter, deface, block, erase, destroy or conceal, uh, might uh, make me uh, produce a follow-up letter to the Advocate General on an issue that I have. Um, the second point, though, is, is as in other cases where we have commissioners who, ov who oversee or were supposed to oversee or uh, trying to oversee the, the, the function of government, uh, I think it's probably well worthwhile reminding all public bodies that uh, we don't produce these FOIs just for fun uh, and that the, just as this petition committee belongs to the people of Scotland, so the uh, Commissioner and those applying FOI requests uh, should understand that it has the full backing of this Parliament and uh, it perhaps needs we need to refresh in the minds of everyone that uh, that facility, just as this facility, is there for their benefit and not for uh, anyone else's. Thank you for that. Uh, other members wish to come in? Perhaps haven't spoken. Yeah, can we be can? Could I just go? Did you have any suspicions, Mr. Chisholm, that they were giving this figure uh, deliberately, inaccurately, or, or not? Were you suspicious that they were just throwing out a figure? Well, I think they were trying to play down the amount of money they'd spent on the appeal from day one. Yeah. Um, but as a, I don't know whether it was a deliberate uh, deception, but um, surely if they'd told another requester seven months earlier that they'd spent £20,000, and then at the end of the process they tell me that they'd spent thirteen, there must be something amiss. But could that, excuse me, could that not have just been a, a misunderstanding inaccuracy? Because obviously that first petition was in the public record, but not the second one, the first amount. So therefore, if they'd have given the same amount, would you have questioned it? If they'd said it was 20,000 when you asked your question, would you have questioned it again? Yes, because there had been two tribunal hearings after the first answer was given, so they must have spent more. Hmm. Um, therefore, the figure was bogus, in my view. Yep. Thank you. Um, I don't know if Eliza Brown used to add anything or raise any... I'm just here for moral support. All right, yeah, that's not at all. <laughs> no, it's not compulsory. It's not. Um, um, do members have any other points they wish to put to our witness? I think uh, John Wilson made a good point about um, inviting the information commissioner to come before the committee, in which we could obviously ask questions about this particular petition. How do members feel about that as an option? On and presumably also because we're talking about future government legislation there's an amendment to the Act, we would, it would be useful to get the Scottish Government's view whether they intend to bring any fresh legislation in in this subject. Did you have a point, Anne McTaggart? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I had read that the last um, it had been reviewed and was a wee while back, so um, I think it's important that we do follow, as John Wilson had mentioned earlier, and we do take further evidence on this. Just in terms of timing, do members wish to get an answer back from the Scottish Government before we invite the Information Commissioner, or do you want to do both at the same time? John Wilson? I mean, I'd be quite happy to get the right to both at the same time, at the same time right. because I'd be keen to get, given that the Cabinet Secretary has been quoted, uh, then I think it would be useful to get the Scottish Government's view on the issues raised by Mr Chisholm and whether or not there would be any inkling as to whether or not the Scottish Government would bring forward amendments to the legislation to allow us to uh, amend it in a way that would allow for accurate information to be provided to all FOI requests. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I think the committee is quite clear then that we obviously wish to continue the petition. 
we will be writing to the Information Commissioner inviting her to come before us in the future, a date to be organised, and we're writing to the Scottish Government to see if there's any intention to legislate in this area. Angus MacDonald, you had a point? Yeah, thanks, Commissioner. I'm happy to agree to that, um, but I was just wondering if we could ask Spice to provide us with uh, information regarding Section 65 of uh, the FOISC okay. uh, with regard to how many cases have been referred to the Court of Session. Well, we right anyway. well, <coughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> thank you. Well, if, if we put it in the... If we put that in the Commissioner's letter at the same time, then okay. she would obviously know, because clearly there's a big issue here. If, if there's false, allegedly false FOI information coming out, that, there is a criminal issue around this, so it's important I think we get some clarity on this. Uh, do any other members have any other points before we conclude? Are members happy with that course of action? Thank you. Uh, could I thank, um, Mr. Chis thank you. Could I, Mr Chisholm for coming along, and I'll suspend for one minute so I'll allow our witnesses to leave. Thank you.